Hello everyone, I'm Mamu Minokamo. Nice to meet you all. Today, I need to change the domain of a site I've been operating, so I'd like to share how to do this. Nextcloud, in particular, requires a database, so we need to be careful about that aspect. Additionally, I've set up many sharing links for files, and I want to maintain those links as they are. It would be quite troublesome to reconfigure all the files afterward and communicate those changes to others. There are many other applications that use databases, and besides sharing links, various database-related information exists. If you watch this video until the end, it will surely be useful somewhere. Above all, it will lead to improving your skills. Now, let's get started right away. Hello. I'll be learning along with you. Nice to meet you all. Then, I guess I'll provide support too. This could save us a considerable amount of time. Oh, Ms. Takayama, Dad, hello there. What I want to accomplish is, as shown in the video, to ensure Nextcloud continues to function normally, even after changing the domain. First, we need to link the new domain with the IP address. The IP address points to the Nextcloud server that's currently operating under the old domain, and it's still working with that old domain. This part isn't particularly difficult, so I'll move through it quickly. By the way, did you explain what you're using for the server? There are options like AWS or Oracle Cloud, you know. Oh, I forgot to mention that. I've installed Nextcloud on a basic rental server, and I'm currently in the process of editing the files. May I ask a question? Is this configuration file easy to find? Yes, it depends on your environment, but the file is named config.php. It's located in the directory where you installed Nextcloud, so I think you should be able to find it quite easily and I'm planning to edit this file now. You can edit it directly with WinSCP, but for this video, I'd like to use VS Code. As I mentioned at the beginning, remember that you can still access it using the old domain. Eventually, I'll discontinue the old domain, but it's necessary to explain the differences, you see. It's a shame though, since it's been approved for Google AdSense. Hmm, I'm looking forward to this but you're really getting into some specialized stuff here. Well, yeah, I'll add the new domain below the old one, as shown in the video. Oh, wait, since I've linked the subdomain and IP address, I need to configure the crucial subdomain on the server. I think similar settings exist on other rental servers as well. I thought Nextcloud could only be installed on AWS or Google Cloud, but I see it can be configured this way too. Exactly. My first installation was on a cloud service as well. Once you get used to cloud services, rental servers seem so simple in comparison. Why not give it a try, everyone? And yes, one thing we absolutely can't forget is setting up the SSL certificate. Since the old domain was operating with an SSL certificate, it's probably best to do the same for the new domain. Actually, there are other settings too, but let's check in the browser first. It's obvious that we can access the sharing links set up with the old domain, but the question is whether it will work with the new domain as well. I see, so as you showed earlier, you can list multiple domains in the configuration file. And being able to access files directly like that, I'm surprised at how flexible the system is. Yes, we can access the files themselves, but there's actually a major issue. When you access through any domain other than the one originally configured, problems occur in the admin interface. So, this is where the real content of this video begins. You see, I couldn't find any of this information through searching. I somehow managed to figure out the solution by using generative AI. Learning is important, and if you don't know what to ask, even having generative AI won't help much. It's like having a treasure you can't use. So let's do our best together. You're right. 
it affects generative AI too. So the next thing we need to do is configure it so there are no issues with the new domain. That's right. Sometimes it feels like generative AI is becoming self-aware. And in the end, we'll need to work with the database. Since phpMyAdmin is for handling databases, it's installed on every rental server. But since Lollipop allows SSH connections, couldn't we use MySQL commands through that instead? Yes, I usually do that. But for learning purposes, I want to operate through this interface today. So, what I'm doing right now is searching for the old domain across the entire database. Nextcloud operates based on the domain you initially configured for internal links and the admin interface. So when you use multiple domains, it creates inconsistencies that lead to problems. However, the ability to configure multiple domains and IP addresses is a feature designed to provide flexibility for users who need specialized operating environments. I can guess what we need to do. We're going to replace the old domain with the new one. That's exactly right. Let's go ahead and do that now. The search results showed nearly 20,000 instances of the old domain, so we'll need to replace all of these. I'll include the syntax in a link in the video description, so please use that as a reference. This has been very educational. It will be useful for migrating other CMS platforms like WordPress too. Yes, this technique can be applied to other situations as well, so I definitely encourage you to try it. Wow, I had considered using a plugin too, but this method is quite fast. Well, it does depend on the server's capabilities, but I think this is one of the faster methods. And with that, our migration is complete. I think we'll wrap things up here for today. Thank you, everyone. See you next time. Goodbye.